Today, we talk all things hair. This is wool, not hair. This is hair. Perfect, I might add. So, what we're going to talk about is hair and how to select hair. Because all hair is not created equal. And you cannot tie good flies with bad hair. If you do not select it yourself, you got a really good chance of getting a piece of crap hair. So, I want to show you exactly how to pick really good hair. And it really doesn't matter if you're taking a piece of hair like this, that little tiny short fine, or this. It really makes no difference. The, the grading process is exactly the same. So, the first thing you have to understand is that there's three types of hair within this piece of hair. There's fur, directional hair, and guard hair. The guard hair is the tipped hair at the top. And the fur is the thing that makes bad hair. <clears throat> so when you, when you select a hair, what I tell people in my seminars all the time is you can actually feel it. If you rub your finger down it like this and it feels coarse, it's generally pretty good hair. If you rub your hand down it like this and it feels slick and kind of greasy, bad hair. And what it's telling you is when you do that is you can feel the fur. So what I'm going to show you is the difference. So I got this, this is a piece of crap hair right here. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in here, and I'm going to cut a piece of this out. And then when you, when you clean the hair, you always hold the, the tips back here, right, right where the guard, where the color changes. Now, when you, what you're going to see is I'll put this in the comb, and I'll pull this out. Okay, so I did three pulls through it. Now it's relatively clean. Now you're going to see that's what was inside it. All right. I don't know how good you can see that, but I'll have Johnny zoom in on that in a second. But this is, what that is, is all this fuzz in here that looks like dubbing. That is exactly what causes you not to be able to tie the fly well. This dubbing is the fur. And so what the fur tells you, and that's what it's all about. What, what you're trying to establish when you're figuring out which hair is good is when it was harvested. Because if it's a late season deer... Then it's like this. Then it's really kind of junky hair, and it's getting a full of this stuff. And that's why when you rub your finger on it and it feels smooth, you're feeling all this stuff underneath it. When you go like this and you feel it and it's kind of coarse, that's when you're starting to feel there is no none of that fur in the, between the hairs. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you exactly what you're looking for and why that why you feel what you're feeling. So the first thing you look for when you're grading good hair, and again, it doesn't matter if it's short fine or if it's long spinning or stacking hair, it's all the same. This thing's got a color change right there, and I'm not sure which one of these you can see better, but you'll see there's a dark line right there. All right, This dark line right there, is telling. that's where the guard hairs start. That's all guard hair. The directional hair, there's three kinds. There's fur, directional, and guard. The fur is that fuzzy crap down there. The directional hairs you can barely see. And the guard hairs are that tipped hair right there. What you're looking for is this line right here to have about an inch to an inch and a half between it. And when you look inside, if you look really close at the hair, you'll mm -hmm. see a little wiggle to that just wiggly line. The hair, every one of them is kinky like that. And there's none of this fuzz in the middle of it. And that's why when you go like this and you feel it and you, you grade the hair, you go like that, it'll feel coarse because you're feeling that wrinkle. So when you're, when you're looking at a piece on the shelf, if, you know, if you're buying it, you want to make sure that you have as much of this that's straight. You don't want to have a cowlick in it. It's, uh, I don't have a piece. Hold on a second here. Yeah. We'll find All right. This one's not really good, but you can see it's starting to curve like this. I was looking for a piece down. I don't have a piece in there. I throw the bad stuff out. So... What you're looking for is straight hair right here throughout the entire piece of hair. You don't want to have a curve in it because you can never work with a curve. It's always going to go back. Curved hair, you can't straighten. It's always going to be there. So you want a nice straight line across here as often as you can. What the straight line tells you is that it's right in the peak of the season when they harvest the deer. Because the hair keeps growing. If you put these two right beside each other, and I'll have Johnny do a close-up here in a second of that. When you put these two right beside each other, you'll see there's no, there's no distinct line here. That's because this hair is old. It's been, this is a late season harvest. And so it's been growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's filling in the gaps of those wrinkles with this fur. So now this is cold weather deer. 
this hair is growing and growing and it's getting all this fuzz in it for insulation. When you get one like this, which has got that nice clean line, that's a mid-November, late November deer that's got, it's grown out all at the same length and it hasn't started to fill in with that fuzz. The other thing about this stuff is it starts getting brittle. It gets really hard to work with and you're never going to get a really clean collar, which we're going to talk about next week. You're never going to get a clean collar with a hair that doesn't have this nice line across it. So, recapping. All right, regardless of the kind of hair, and by the way, it's really hard to find good black deer hair. Black, I don't know, it's something about the dyeing process, I have no idea, but you really got to select. And, and that's another thing. If you, if you don't have a relationship with a shop, obviously I want you to call my shop because we do hand select. But if you don't, you really need to explain to them what you're doing with it. Because if you're just, if you're doing collars and you don't have really good hair, or if you're doing stuff with short fine work, like for dries, you got to have quality hair. So, recap. What you're looking for, it's very simple. You can feel it first. It'll feel coarse, all right? You rub with the hair. Recap very quick. Nice, clean, straight line. All the hair is going in the same direction. Nice, clean, straight line. Roughly an inch to an inch and a half between that line and the hide right here. You're looking for a nice, kinky little line in that hair and you're not looking for any of this in it. So when you look at that hair, you shouldn't see it. You can see that fur, just you can see it on any of the bad pieces. So, nice clean line, inch and a half, a little bit of kinky, straight hair all the way through. Next week we're going to show you how to do it. We're going to use the short vine, we're going to do elk hair caddis, and we're going to do collars and spinning. And you'll see the difference and you'll see why when you clean that hair, how, how imperative it is not to have this crap in the hair. Hope that helps you out.